Welcome back to Fossil Ridge Games. Today we are talking about Ironheart. I'm going to show you a video on basic strategy and deck building tips for Marvel Champions Living Card Game. What makes Ironheart unique is that she can power up her suit, her exosuit. And what's pretty cool about it is that you can spend what's called progress tokens to essentially um, go from version 1 to 2 to 3. And if you notice on these cards, the base core stats will increase. Um, something else that increases is the hand size. So uh, in her first form, She's going to have a 1-2-3 for thwart, attack, and defense. And it's going to go to 2-2-3 two, two, and then finally 3-2-3. Three, two, three. So her most powerful version is really, really cool. Secondarily, you're going to notice that the first version of Ironheart um, is just normal. So she's running around on the ground. The second and third versions of her are both aerial. So that's something to um, really look up. And then finally, the hand size at the bottom her first version is at four, second version is at five, and finally her maximized version is at six. Obviously her first version having a hand size of four is fairly restrictive, and that's kind of a deficit that you're gonna to have to overcome. You don't see a lot of Marvel Champion heroes with a hand size of four. Um, you know, you saw it with Thor, and then the Incredible Hulk had a strange sort of twist where you had to discard your hand every turn. Um, that was fairly restrictive um, as well. So kind of the core to this is that you need progress tokens. So in her first alter ego form, you're going to spend a mental resource and you can place a progress counter um, on her and you can only do this once per turn. And what you're going to do is uh, try to build up to get six progress counters. And once you get six progress counters, you can level her up. This is a super cool... Um, sort of thing that you see in this in this deck and honestly when we were playing it at the table the person playing this in our play group really loved this and just kept saying over and over again how much fun it was to level up Ironheart over the course of the of the mission so you remove six progress counters from her and you get to ready her and then you swap the version so then you basically power up to version two and when you hit version two it's the same thing so the progress counters you need six of them to power up to version three once you hit version three, it's pretty cool. You can actually still use the progress counters, but you can remove them to do two points of damage to an enemy. So that's pretty cool. And once you even hit maximum level, you can still spend the progress counters to damage the enemy. We're gonna continue on and talk about progress counters, specifically with Ironheart. So first up, we have a support, which is Ronnie Williams. And this is an alter ego action only. So when you exhaust this support, you can either heal two damage um, from Ironheart, or you can place two progress counters on her as well. So this is kind of a, a nice option. You can do fast heal ramping when she goes into alter ego form, or you can add a progress counter onto it. So this is gonna be a permanent support that sits out on the table. You're not gonna get a ton of progress counters over the course of the game, because it's an alter ego action, but it still is very helpful. Next up is Stroke of Genius, and this is going to be a resource card that you can play. And notice down here that this has a mental resource on it. We're going to be talking a lot about mental resources later in the game. Kind of with the pre-constructed deck that came with her, there's a leadership deck, and there's the need for a bunch of these mental counters. So kind of the example deck I made for this character, I just kind of amplified the existing pre-constructed deck that came with her. So as we look at this, after you spend this card, place one progress counter on your identity card and draw a card. This is pretty cool, um, and it allows you to ramp those progress tokens a little bit quicker. Here's some more progress counter-oriented cards. First one's flyover. There's going to be two copies of this in the hero cards that come with this set. Remove three threat from a scheme and place one progress counter on Ironheart, or two if the thwart removes the last threat from a scheme. So if you eliminate a scheme using this card, you get two progress tokens instead. And then the one on the right is Photon Beam. You can deal four points of damage to an enemy and you can place one progress counter on Ironheart. 
or two if you eliminate the enemy. So, you know, when you're ramping her, use Photon Beam to wipe out minions. Another cool aspect of Ironheart is sort of the concept of she's kind of building her suit while she's powering up as well. So it has a little bit of a feel uh, of when you play Iron Man. So there's a couple really cool um, upgrades that are present in this deck. And they both give you hit points, which is fantastic. So the first one's going to be the Propulsion Jets. You get plus two hit points. Hero Action exhausts these jets to remove a threat from the scheme equal to Ironheart's version number. So remember, she can be version one, two, or three. This thing is going to sit out on the table, and you can just simply exhaust it to remove threat over the course of the game. I love this card. It's fantastic. Hit points and threat reduction, and it gets better over the course of the game. That's a really powerful combo. Next up, we have... Um, the Photon Blasters, this also gives you plus two hit points, and this is very similar to the other upgrade, except it does damage. So Exhaust, the Photon Blasters deal damage to an enemy equal to Ironheart's version number. So her version number can either be one, two, or three. We're going to continue on and talk about two more permanent cards in the deck. The first one's going to be a support, the Tony Stark AI. Exhaust this card, look at the top two cards of your deck, add one to your hand, and then discard the other one. So this is a great way to sort of filter through your deck um, fairly quickly. What's great about this card is that it's not an alter ego form card, so you can use it in either form. So just remember that a lot of these cards are typically like alter ego form only. Next up, we have Brawn. And really, I mean, it, it's an ally, but pay attention to resource. And it says generate a mental resource. Uh, when the character is exhausted, so you can do this once per turn. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind when we look at the example deck that we have this time, because mental resources are going to be very important. Next up, we have a sector scan card. There's only one of these in the deck, and this is going to ramp. So the cost is going to be um, reduced by the version number. So this is a little bit kind of strange. So basically, if you're, you know, version one, it's going to cost two, and then it's going to go down to one, and then it's going to go down to zero when you're in version three. So you're never really going to pay um, three for this because it starts at two, and then it drops to one, then to zero. So this thing's a little bit strange. So you can only do this as a hero. It says until the end of the round, you may look at the top card of the encounter deck at any time. This can be um, kind of interesting. I think it was very impactful. You can do some weird stuff with it, but since there's only one of them in the deck, um, you know, it's nothing that you can really like focus a deck strategy around, in my opinion. And then next up, we have uh, two copies of New and Improved in the deck. It's a little bit heavy for the resource cost, I think. Um, it, it's pretty decent, though, when you're in version three. So basically it costs three resources, and then you can pick either one, two, or three of these bullet points, depending on your version number. Um, so obviously if you do this in your third version, you get to do all of these, which is pretty fantastic. Um, otherwise it's just kind of okay, because it's kind of resource restrictive. First one is search your deck for an Ironheart card and add it to your hand. So think about looking for your upgrades you know, those two upgrades that we talked about that give you hit points. Uh, next up, we have give Ironheart a tough stats card. I always love tough stats cards. You can soak up a hit from the villain. And then next up, you can ready Ironheart, which is great as well. So in version three, this is really impactful. The Ironheart pre-constructed deck that comes with her is a leadership deck. So I'm going to start going through uh, some of the cool advantages of playing this deck. I had a fun time playing leadership with her, so I decided, hey, I'm just going to tweak this leadership deck a little bit, um, kind of buff it up and amplify it, and that will be the deck that I present to you for this video. So both of these are very, very similar. One of them is going to be related to dealing damage. The other one is going to be um, really removing a, a high number of threats. So they're both kind of similar. One of them is going to key off of an energy resource, which is the lightning bolt icon. And then the other card is going to key off of mental resources. So I, I mentioned before, hey, um, make sure that you're looking at mental resources um, in your deck. And this is why we're doing that. So this one is pretty wild. It says it's an attack option. Exhaust your hero and deal damage to an enemy equal to the total 
of your hero's thwart attack and defense values. This one on the right hand side, push ahead, is pretty much the same thing. Exhaust your hero, remove threat from a scheme equal to your hero's total, um, you know, threat, attack, I'm sorry, thwart, attack, and defense values. And really where this comes into play is that since Ironheart can ramp up all of her like kind of core ability scores, so like in version one, she's gonna have a total of six. Um, in version two, she's gonna have a total of seven. And then in her third version, she's gonna have a total of eight. So these cards just are gonna start ramping kind of with her. And that's why they're kind of cool to play with Ironheart. So I'm going to walk you through a couple strategies in which you can make your base ability scores even bigger over the course of a turn. So you can really maximize what these two cards are doing. And I found that this strategy was really effective. And what I loved about it is that there were two different ways that you could um, really utilize her high like ability score totals, and it made it really, really versatile, and I think it makes it a very viable play style, especially for Ironheart. So to maximize the cards that we just saw on the screen, go all out and push ahead, there's a couple things that you can do. So the two cards, sort of on the left and in the middle, come with the Ironheart set, and then the one on the right comes in a previous set, and you can use it to sort of amplify the strategy, and it makes it easier to perform some of these combos. So the first one is morale boost, and you can choose a hero until at the end of that round, the hero gets a plus one thwart, attack and defense. And so remember that that's going to buff up Ironheart's core stats uh, by one. So that effectively adds a plus three when you're playing either go all out or push ahead. So it's going to increase your damage and your threat reduction by plus three by simply playing this morale boost. And in the center of the table, this thing is gonna be kind of a resource hog and it's a little bit difficult to get out onto the table. It's going to require that when you play it down to the table, you have to use two mental resources and that can be a little bit of a difficulty. So that's why I've been kind of focusing on mental resources over the course of this video to kind of keep that in mind that, hey, you need a little bit of strategy sometimes to get these crazy combos to work, but it's really satisfying once you do get these combos to work because the damage output and the threat reduction is massive. So this one is you exhaust this facility and it comes out with three tokens on it. And um, a friendly character gets plus one thwart and attack until the end of the phase. So if you look at these two in conjunction, you play them together, that would be a plus five bonus that you could potentially give to Ironheart. So when you're amplifying, go all out and push ahead, that would be really massive. And then the one on the right-hand side of the screen is a little bit more restrictive, but it gives you another avenue to perform this combo. And this one you have to do when you're coming out of um, sort of alter ego form and you're switching back into your hero form. So this one's gonna be after you change form, your hero gets plus one thwart attack and, and uh, defense until the end of the round. So obviously it's not gonna be very impactful if you switch forms and you go into alter ego form because you don't have any of your base stats when you're in alter ego form. So you really need to use Moxie when you're converting from alter ego uh, back into your hero form. Now, if you have all three of these and you can somehow get them all to trigger, the bonuses are massive. It's highly unlikely that you'll be able to get all of these to trigger on the same turn just because you probably won't all have them in your hand. And then also too, it's just really resource constrictive. So if you're spending a morale boost and moxie from your hand, you're basically losing two cards from your hand. And then if you're going to be playing go all out or push ahead, you're gonna need extra resources to play this down. So it's gonna be kind of unlikely that you're gonna have enough resources to play all th three of these together, but it's fairly likely that you can play um, these two together or these two together and then get the combo to work. All right, let's just do some basic math and I'll show you how go all out and push ahead can get really crazy really fast. So for this example, Ironheart is in version three mode. So think of this as kind of like a late game sort of thing. And once we got this combo going, it was absolutely ridiculous. The thwarting and the amount of damage that Ironheart was putting out was pretty significant making her an extremely versatile character at the end game. And we were playing a big multiplayer, four-player game. That's typically what we do. 
um, and it was very impactful. So Ironheart is going to have a total of eight um, ability score overall if you add up all of her core ability scores. Next, if you hit a morale boost, that's going to jump to 11. And then finally, if you uh, exhaust the R&D facility, that's going to be 13. So simply by doing that, you could either, like if you play Go All Out, you could hit an enemy for 13 points of damage, which is really, really heavy. Or you could remove um, that much threat from a scheme, so 13 threat. Now, this is extremely powerful in a multiplayer game because there's so much threat going on to the main scheme each round. If you remove 13 threat, that is just massive. And the fact of the matter is you can hit really hard and remove amount of threat that's really heavy as well. Those are the two core objectives of the game, defeating the villain and also making sure that you don't have so much threat that you lose the game. So this combo is really, really powerful. Or you can do Moxie, which Moxie gives you a plus one to all of them as well. But it, you have to do it when you're converting from your alter ego form um, back in. Now, in one case, um, especially when the other player was in version three, she was able to execute this combo with all of these cards, which was absolutely ludicrous. So it added an additional um, three points on. So it jumped from a 13 to a 16, and we were only able to get it to occur once in numerous games. But she was able to hit the villain for 16 points of damage. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So it's going to be pretty rare that you can play all these together. Um, but she was able to mix and match and play Moxie and Morale Boost with R&D Facility. And to kind of keep things going, it, and it works really, really well. So I highly recommend um, just kind of trying out the combo that comes in the... Uh, hero set. It's a really fun strategy. When you have built a deck and you're executing a sort of complex strategy, just remember too that you need the resources in order to execute these combos. If you don't have the resources, everything just kind of shuts down. So as we've seen before, that go all out requires an energy resource and push ahead requires a mental resource. So if you don't have these things sitting off to the side, you just simply can't do these combos, which can make it really difficult. So on the left hand side of the screen, this is an older card and it allows you to put an upgrade on the table and you place just three energy counters on it. You could exhaust this thing and remove an energy counter um, from it, but you could only use this in hero form, which is fine because all these things are hero actions. So use enhanced reflexes. You don't need a ton of these in your deck. I only recommend just having one. And you're only gonna trigger this really when you're playing go all out. So you're keeping this card to simply do the go all out card. And on the right hand side of the screen, there's an upgrade that also comes in the Ironheart pack. Um, and it's ingenuity. And this is pretty cool. You can only play it on a character that is a genius which is Ironheart, and there's a few other ones in the collection. I'm not exactly sure what other heroes have genius, but I'm pretty sure there are other ones as well. Um, but what you can do is you can exhaust ingenuity to generate a mental resource. So you can use that mental resource to help you trigger push ahead. Or what you can do is you can use that mental resource to help you bring out the R&D facility, which needs two mental resources. So when you're executing these complex combos, make sure you have the resources to back up your strategy. For alternate aspects for Ironheart, I think she's pretty tanky. So as we looked at before, her maximum hit point total when she's fully decked out can be a 17. Um, something else that you should notice is that in her version 1 suit, her defense is a 3, which makes her very tanky as well. So having a 3 defense and 17 hit points maximum makes her pretty tough and potent. Plus her deck comes with a couple copies of New and Improved, which allows you to give Ironheart a tough status card, which also helps in tanking. So if you wanted to run the protection aspect with her, I think it would be uh, pretty decent. I mean, we really kind of favored the leadership style because we wanted to try out all the new cards. And that was just uh, really, really fun. 
Um, but I think she has the ability to be a little bit tanky. Um, on the other sorts of the spectrum for like justice and aggression, I think you can put together a pretty basic um, sort of deck with her. And obviously some of her like native cards in the deck that do threat mitigation and do damage, they just don't really pace all that well with some of the other stuff that you can put in for justice and aggression. So if you're a player that favors either of those two aspects, I think you can put together a pretty um, average and generic uh, deck for her. Um, I'm not sure there's any really major combos that you can execute. Obviously, we've been talking about Ariel, Ariel, and Ariel forever, um, specifically on this channel. I think it's something that I really like to come back to because some of those cards are just really ultra powerful. Um, other than that, though, you know, just keep your eyes out for cool combos and, you know, have fun with deck building strategies. So to sum up Ironheart, I think she ramps pretty well over the course of the game and she becomes more and more powerful. So if you look in general, what's going to happen when she goes up in version is that her thwarting ability is going to go up. Her attack and her defense are really going to be static. In addition, you're going to have her convert to aerial in the second version. She's also going to be aerial in the third. And then finally, her hand size is also going to ramp significantly over the course of the game. And then you throw into the mix these two upgrades, and then her hit point total is also going to ramp over the course of the game. So her power ramping is going to be very interesting uh, when you play it. Now, she is going to be a little bit deficient in resource generation simply because she has a hand size of four, and she doesn't have a lot of cards that really help her um, generate resources over the course of the game. So resource ramping is going to be slow, but her power ramping is going to be pretty aggressive once you start converting her forms and putting her upgrades onto the table. So I think a lot of players that are kind of looking for that end game feel, kind of like you build the Iron Man suit um, for one of those original five heroes. That has the same feel to this. It's a little bit different. Um, I kind of like how you, you're kind of like building the suit and leveling her up at the same time by putting out upgrades. I think that's really satisfying. And it's also just neat to see her progress over the course of the game, just become really ridiculously powerful um, toward the mid and end game. I hope you have enjoyed this video and hopefully this has sparked some deck building ideas for you. I want to thank you for joining me today and as always, have fun gaming.